Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Zia, I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to discuss with you uh, my uh, feedback to you based on my experience in the field, on my observations, uh, whether of pros and cons to medical and surgical transition. I'll be sharing more psychological observations versus medical because I'm not a medical doctor and especially medical uh, potential issues arising out of medical and surgical transition are going to be very individualistic. They're highly dependent on your overall health, your lifestyle, and so many numerous factors, including your health history. And that's better left for discussion between you and your medical provider. But I will be sharing the psychological pros and cons of going through medical and surgical transition. Medical and surgical transition, as a lot of you know, is something that people decide to go through in order to align their gender, and in order to alleviate gender dysphoria distress that they do feel. I always say, and if you're a subscriber to my channel, you must know this about me. I do not believe the gender, medical, and surgical transition is a must if a person identifies as transgender. If a person is transgender of any identities out there, I do not believe that medical or surgical is a must. That's me. You may agree to disagree, I have a very strong stance on this because I worked with a lot of people. I've seen people who, for a lot of reasons, decided that going through medical surgical transition will not in any way alleviate things for them, but actually brings them more difficulties and challenges. I worked with people who benefited greatly from it. I worked with people who never had resources to go through those things. So many different things go into it. So to say that somebody is not really transgender because they haven't gone through surgical and medical transition is uh, for me deeply deeply inaccurate and it just negates overall human experience it also negates how we all adapt cope and deal with gender dysphoria some people may be able to deal with internal distress their distress may not be severe to warrant for them to go through medical and surgical transition so for that reason i am very strong advocate that it is not a must it absolutely can be and I always want that option to be out there for, for anybody who needs it. I always want accessibility to gender affirming care to be there because it's vital, incredibly vital, life-saving, without a doubt, for people who need it. But we need to be real and we need to acknowledge that there's a lot of people who, even if they do feel needed, may decide that it's simply not worth it for them. And that is their prerogative. Uh, and in no way does it negate the fact that there are transgender. Transgender identity, whether you're trans woman, trans man, whether you're non-binary identified, transgender identity is essentially your eternal subjective sense of who you are. That eternal subjective sense of who you are is not tied or is in no way um, related to necessarily going through gender transition, even social transition. Any kind of so transition uh, steps out there that exist, it's not tied to that. Those are just uh, potential steps to help you feel more aligned, to help you feel more congruent, to help you feel less distressed. That's what they're there for. But they're not in any way um, necessarily a deep reflection of your identity. It doesn't mean that if, because you're not engaging in any of the steps, it doesn't mean that you're less than in relationship to your gender. It absolutely does not. So this is my two cents. Uh, you can agree to disagree. And if you strongly disagree with what I'm saying, feel free to vocalize it in the comment section in a mindful, uh, critical thought way. So that way that I can engage with you in the discussion. Um, but I do know that a lot of, of my viewers do agree with this because I know that a lot of you are living in different circumstances. You're living in different um you're situated in different contexts. Some of you are living in a places where it's not even safe to socially transition, uh, let alone going through medical and surgical transition. It can literally get you killed. And to say that you're not transgender because you're not able to go through the steps is just completely ludicrous. But let's get back to the benefits. What are the pros and cons of going through medical and surgical transition? Like I said, it's absolutely not a must. But for those who feel like it is, it absolutely can and is an essential step in their gender transition. I think medical and surgical transition is an interesting conversation because today, more than ever, 
there's so much in terms of um, our vocabulary vernacular in regards to our gender and in regards to how we understand gender. Uh, there's so much now in, in the world in terms of having a lot of uh, individuals, a lot of social influencers, a lot of public figures who are gender bending in multitude of ways without necessarily going through a medical and surgical transition. And when you're living in a world where you're seeing all of this happening, it allows you to start introspect and to start think about your relationship to your gender differently. It start, allows you to find a way to express yourself in different ways that may make you feel more authentic, more congruent with yourself without going through medical and surgical transition. For that reason, especially it absolutely not a must because we're changing, we're shifting the way we understand and the way we're navigating uh, gender, um, I, I guess, gender pathways, if you will. And it is highly, highly individualistic and very, very person-centric. I cannot express it enough how individualistic that decision is for anybody. So what are the benefits? What are the pros and what are the cons, psychologically speaking, of going through medical and surgical tradition if you decide to go through this? So let's first start with this potential pros and get it out of the way. Some of the pros uh, of, I mean, some of the cons, let me start with cons, then you spoke, uh, and then we can end on a, on a positive note. Some of the cons of going through medical and surgical transition for adults is first and foremost, I would say probably one of the most important and biggest con is potentially uh, risking losing people around you. This would be your, your partners if you're in a relationship, this would be your family, this would be your friends. Um, those things, unfortunately, do happen. And to lie and to pretend like everything is going to smell like roses after you go through medical surgical transition is just simply not true. And it's not fair to you because you need to uh, consider all of the realistic things. Now, one of the things that is true is that the loss of people who are close to you doesn't happen 100% of the time. I have seen a tremendous amount of individuals who are still together in a relationship. I've seen a tremendous amount of individuals who are still close to their families, who are still close to their friends. And yet I also see the opposite end of it, that people do lose their loved ones. That is the biggest con of going through medical and surgical transition, of really immersing yourself in trying to achieve the congruency you seek and by doing so losing people around you uh, and that can be very challenging and a lot of times you may not know how things are going to unfold until you start doing it it's almost as that phrase you don't you don't know how things are going to happen or you don't know how you're going to deal with them rather uh, until you cross that bridge so it's important to keep that in mind and not to be anxiety driven but this is definitely one of the cons of going through surgical and medical tradition. Another con of going through surgical or medical tradition is hoping and thinking that the congruency you may achieve through hormone replacement therapy or through surgeries is going to alleviate dysphoria, but only to realize that the dysphoria is still there. We have to be very clear. I have to be very clear in vocalizing that surgical and medical transition is not a 100% fix for alleviating gender dysphoria. In my experience, it helps tremendously. Some people will say it alleviates 100%, phenomenal. Some people will say it eliminates 80%, also great. Some people say 50%. Some people say it feels the same, they're still struggling with dysphoria, even though they feel more congruent about themselves. This is really important to acknowledge. It's really important for, I think, everybody to start having conversation that medical and surgical transition is not 100% uh, without any, any kind of negative aspects to it, especially really, you know, in, in medical community too, you know, to say that when you go through hormones and you go through surgeries, you're not going to have any medical consequences. It's, it's just not, that's not the case. Unfortunately, some people have consequences, just like with any other medical and surgical treatment out there, any other medical and surgical treatment out there, there is a high possibility it will alleviate whatever it's meant to alleviate. There's also a chance that it's going to have, um, going to have side effects. Anything out there will have a side effect. If I take ibuprofen every single day for something, that will eventually have a side effect on my body. Uh, if I'm, I had cancer when I was 16 years old, chemotherapy helped me live. It is undoubtedly saved my life, 100%. 
chemotherapy, going through 16 chemotherapies also messed up my internal organs. Also down the line, I'm going to have more potential uh, side effects from going through chemotherapy. Uh, there's also other things that I experienced as a result of going through chemotherapy. So as you can see, gender medical and surgical transition also is going to have potential good things about it, but it's also potential may affect you in a negative way. And it's about realizing what's worth it. For people who are struggling with gender dysphoria and deciding on medical and surgical transition, the potential cons are irrelevant, invisible in regards to potential pros. And this is why people do it. People are not doing it because it's easy. People are doing it because this outweighs this. Just like for me, going through 16 chemotherapies and saving my life versus the cons of damage to some of my body organs was absolutely a no-brainer for me. But it's this still was here, and we need to acknowledge that as well. So that's another um, uh, another con, is that it, it might affect you in a different way than you expected. You may still have gender dysphoria, even though you achieve congruency, and you may have some of the medical uh, consequences of going through the hormone replacement therapy, some medical consequences of going through uh, surgery, uh, we know that a lot of people have issues post-surgery. Again, none of the surgeries are supposed to be 100% perfect. None of the surgeries are out there in the world are 100% perfect. Uh, that's just not how the world operates. This is a treatment, medical and surgical treatment, similar to any other treatments out there uh, that we utilize to treat so many other issues. It's able to fix something and sometimes it also has a little bit of con to it as well. So that's another uh, big con is to also be aware and mindful that hopefully, hopefully, ideally, you'll hold in the percentage of high people whose disorder is alleviated by going through medical and surgical transition, but there is no guarantee. That's the nature of the dysphoria. It's just, it's it's very, uh, it's just, it, it's it's hard. It, it's really, let's, let's be honest, it's, it's excruciating. Uh, for so many of you. This is why I, um, when I work with adults, I have seen so many of you have done so many other coping to deal with dysphoria before you decide the medical and surgical transition because you've proven to yourself that all of these other ways of trying to deal with dysphoria doesn't really work and you kind of banking, bank, bank, can't pronounce it, banking, hoping that um, medical and surgical is going to alleviate it and for a lot of it it does but that's important to acknowledge that it's not a perfect 100 percent um 100 thing that is happening here so that's another con um, in terms of considering uh, going through uh, medical and surgical transition another con of going through gender and surgical transition is that by the sheer fact that you are ultimately going to reorient yourself and your relationship to the world in more authentic ways that you see yourself, people are also going to respond to you in relationship to your new, new gender. And that can also bring its own challenges because we still live in a world where there's a lot of sexism. We still live in a world where there's a lot of misogyny. We still live in a world where there's a lot of toxic masculinity. We live in a world where there is still huge disadvantages uh, based on gender disparities. And you may have experienced some advantages in gender assigned at birth. And once you transition, you may realize that there is challenges that come along with it, that you have to learn to adapt, you have to learn to navigate. That's another con. Now, these are just the most of the common cons. I'm sure there's a lot of other cons that a lot of you are thinking of. Comment below, share those cons as well. I think it's super, super important um, especially for the channel because it's situated for adults, for all of us to consider uh, lucidly all the pros and cons before making big life-altering decisions. That's not only going to help you instrumentally to deal with anything that comes along, but it's going to prime you, psychologically prepare you for whatever may come along. And it's better this way versus idealizing some of the transition steps and idealizing the outcome and then being incredibly crushed and sinking into depression when those outcomes don't come true. Some of the pros, now let's focus on the pros. One of the, uh, obviously, uh, again, uh, notice how a lot of pros are gonna be the other side of a coin uh, towards what I just talked about, cons. One of the biggest pros, obviously, is uh, that congruency that people are, are able to achieve through surgeries and through uh, hormone replacement therapy undeniably is uh, 
incredibly liberating. Undeniably is incredibly helpful in alleviating dysphoria, uh, especially dysphoria is tied to incongruency. That's absolutely is going to be one of the biggest pros uh, for a lot of individuals who have gone through watching this, who have gone through surgical and medical transition. You know this uh, without a doubt that the way you feel now and the fact that you can feel more congruent and show up in the world more as yourself, it is outweighs everything else for you out there. Um, and you, even though it's difficult and it's challenging, uh, given the same situation, you do it all over again. So that's obviously one of the biggest, biggest pros. Another one of the uh, biggest uh, pros is, even though one of the biggest cons here is losing people you are really close to. Here you have an opportunity to now form new amazing relationships based on authentic reciprocity. What I mean by authentic reciprocity is for the first time in your life, you are able to form a relationship where people see you and relate to you in regards to your authenticity in relationship to your gender identity. And that can be incredibly powerful. That can be something that people feel for the first time, especially in intimate relationships. Being an intimate relationship um, of any kind, I'm not just talking about sexual relationship, I'm talking about intimate, uh, long-term relationship with a partner that for the first time sees you in your gender, loves you for who you are, um, adores you for who you are, is priceless. Everybody in this life deserves to be loved. Everybody deserves to experience what being loved feels like for exactly who you are. And that's one of the other biggest, biggest pros of going through surgical and medical transition and getting that alight, alignment, uh, that congruency um, that you need, that you feel, because it is able to give you that experience. And I think, can you have this experience without going through the surgeries? Absolutely, you can. Uh, can you have that experience without going through medical transition? Absolutely, you can. You just have going to have to be real authentic and honest about your authenticity. For a lot of transgender people, I find that um, to be able to achieve that physical congruency becomes very, very instrumental uh, because being able to see themselves in a body that they belong to and being able to show up in a world in a body that they want to is really essential to them. And a lot of times it just makes all of the difference. So this is one of the uh, biggest pros, I would say, of going through a medical and surgical transition. Another one of the uh, pros of going through uh, medical and uh, surgical transition that I already outlined um, in, in uh, just overall talking about it is obviously the reduction alleviation of gender dysphoria. While yes, again, other side of a coin, for a lot of people, it may not fully alleviate it. For a lot of people, it does. Um, or for a lot of people, it makes it that much more manageable to live your life, that much more manageable to move forward. And when you alleviate gender dysphoria, you're also alleviating a lot of other symptoms stemming from gender dysphoria, which is incredibly important for your health. A lot of people know that a lot of you, this is going to be no, more, no mystery to you. You may have suffered with physical issues uh, in regards through uh, by having gender dysphoria, such as gastronomical issues. You may have had um, uh, high levels of anxiety. You may have had uh, people report stomach ulcers, migraines, um, uh, weight gain, you name it. And once you started to really align your body, use your authentic gender, a lot of those ailments went away. You notice that your health improved. You notice that you stopped coping in a negative way, drinking, uh, overeating, some other negative ways of coping. In other words, you just stopped destroying your body because now you like your body. Now you like your body because your body represents who you are and how you see yourself. And as a result, you now want to take care of your body, take care of your temple versus um, neglecting it, versus even unconsciously attacking your body in the ways of, you know, drinking, using drugs, um, self-harming comes to mind, because now you actually really connected to what you're seeing. So that's undeniably is one of the also big process that it's able to benefit your overall health um, and your overall well-being. 
So those are the pros and cons that comes to mind as I think about when it comes to medical and surgical transition. Like I said, I'm sure there's a lot of them. And I think it's really important to notice how they are both uh, of you know different sides to the same coin. And that's also really important to notice that, yes, it can do this, but it also can do this. And what's more important for anybody who's thinking about medical and surgical transition, it is more to have the conversation with yourself, to ask yourself, what will, um, what's going to outweigh what in pros and cons? What's going to help you much more in this pros and cons? When I hear a lot of people um, on a, you know, a, a particular um, spheres talk about completely against medical and surgical transition, saying that trans people are mutilating their bodies and so on and so forth. Uh, I think that's being deeply and very, very unfair uh, to actually the benefits that uh, medical and surgical treatments uh, can bring. Yes, undeniably, they can also be detrimental to one's health. Undeniably, also, they can be psychologically detrimental for sure. Like I said, with me getting cancer, everything has to be um, outweighed, and only you can decide what outweighs what. But to also say that you're not transgender because you are not you deciding not to go through medical and surgical uh, transition uh, is, in my opinion, just very untrue. And I kind of have a very strong opinion on it, as you can tell. Um, I'm open to changing my opinion if you can prove me wrong, if you can prove me how is not going through the steps somehow negates somebody's gender identity. I, I just don't understand how can it possibly be. So comment below, let me know what are the pros and cons, cons uh, to medical and surgical transition that comes to mind. How did you specially made a decision if you decided to go through medical surgical decision? What, what factored into your decision making? If you decided not to go through medical and surgical decision, uh, transition, I'm sorry, um, what also factored into the decision making share below i think it's really important for people to see that there's multitude of ways and they're all again deeply individualistic and they're individualistic for a reason all of you are situated in your own context you all have numerous things influencing your context um, that is going to be center specific to you and you have to make decision arising out of that context versus uh, from any outsider telling you that you absolutely must do anything or everything uh, because you are transgender you have to decide that for yourself so comment below let me know i love reading all of your comments and i'll see you all next time bye